I'm from uh, South Texas, uh, a, a little town called Robstown. It is uh, to the west of Corpus Christi, uh, what is called a Chicano. Uh, in the 1960s and 1970s, uh, there were, of course, the, 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 the labels differ. Now I think what they're called Latinos. Uh, at one point they're called Hispanics. Uh, when I was growing up in the 1950s, we were called Latin Americans. Uh, and then we were Mexican Americans. Well, I grew up in the late 60s and early 70s. That was a Chicano kind of movement. So I would call myself a Chicano. Well, I consider myself Chicano because that's what we called ourselves when we were growing up in the barrios uh, in the 1950s, when I was growing up in the 1950s. So uh, obviously my parents came from uh, Mexico. Not my parents, but my grandparents came from Mexico. My parents were Texas born. So I was born here, obviously. But yes, I'm very much proud of my Mexican descent. Uh, and in 1963, I left uh, Robstown, I joined the Air Force, uh, and the Air Force brought me to San Angelo. I got married here. Uh, I, ret I was sent to uh, order to uh, Key West, Florida, and after a year there, uh, I returned to San Angelo. My wife was from here, uh, and so I attended Angelo State University. And I was here from 1967 until 1970. And then from 1970 until 1973, I um, pursued a master's degree and a PhD at Texas Christian University, and in 1974, I received my PhD um, in uh, Mexican-American studies. Uh, I started teaching in 1973. I was what is called ABD, all but dissertation, and I got my dissertation done in 1974. Now, at that particular time, just a little bit of history, at that particular time, there was a movement of pace, which was called the Chicano Movement. Uh, and I wanted to contribute to that movement, but I was not a good speaker. I, was, uh, I could not um, uh, woo crowds, I could not move crowds. And so I wanted to contribute to it, and I said, well, how can I do this? And I thought I would do that through my scholarship. So I started writing immediately uh, after 1974, and uh, at the very end, I was able, by the time that I retired, I had published uh, 21 books. Uh, some of those books were auth uh, single author, uh, others were co-authored, some were edited, single edit editor, others were, were co-edited, uh, and so on. And then I wrote numerous articles, some like 60 artic articles or essays, numerous book reviews, and so forth and so on. Uh, and so that was my contribution to the, uh, to the movement. It was something that I really enjoyed. Uh, I studied under some very influential professors at Texas Christian University. One of them was named Donald A. Wooster, who taught me that a page a day is a book a year. That's a plaque that is behind me. Uh, and the, uh, he said that if you wrote a page a day, that you would publish a book a year. Well, obviously I didn't publish 42 books, but it's impossible to write a page a day and publish a book a year. Uh, but nonetheless, I had a very satisfying career. I taught at Angelo State uh, from 1973 until 1986. In 1986, I was offered what was called a visiting professor, a visiting professorship at the University of Houston. Uh, so for the year 1986, I was at the University of Houston, but I returned uh, when I finished that year uh, to Angelo State, and I resumed uh, my, career, my teaching career here from 1987 until I retired in 2015. Uh, now, the, um, the um, professorship at uh, the University of Houston called for writing a book on the history of Mexican Americans in Houston. And so that particular year, that's what I did. I didn't do any teaching. That was not my responsibility. Uh, and so uh, I published a book that was called Ethnicity in the Sun Belt. The book didn't come out until 1989. It takes about two years for the book to go through the process. Even after you finish writing, it has to be refereed. It goes to the copy editor, it goes to the publisher, and so forth and so on. So it's not abnormal, it's not out of the ordinary for, for a book to take three years to, to be published. I've lived here since 1965. Uh, I was assigned to Angelo State, uh, I was uh, ordered uh, to, a, to a good fellow Air Force base in 1965. And then from 66, when I got married, uh, until 1967, I was in Key West, Florida. So my wife, was, my wife was from here, but in addition to that, Angelo State had just become a four-year university. And so I said, well, I'll, go, I'll just move to San Angelo and pursue my BA at Angelo State. And then from 1970 to 1970, I went to uh, Texas Christian University. And just about the time that I was finishing, uh, I was offered a position here at Angelo State University. Uh, if I had finished a year later, probably the, uh, the opening would not have been there. Uh, it was just luck, good fortune. 
uh, and so I returned here. And so I've always liked the uh, small town uh, environment at Angelo State. I didn't want to move in Houston, for example. I had opportunities to go other places. I, I was offered uh, positions elsewhere, but I didn't want to be at a, I didn't want to be in Lubbock. I didn't want to be at Texas Tech. I didn't want to use Houston. I didn't want to be at UT. I didn't want to go to El Paso. So this was just perfect for me. And as I said, I've lived here since 1965, and this is my home. Uh, yes, I'm very proud of my contributions, and uh, those contributions are recognized as what is called the scholarly community. By that I mean that there are other scholars, there are other professors at the university who use my works. Uh, and so if you write, for example, an essay on West Texas, that is going to be incorporated into the larger uh, scholarship. For example, I wrote a, uh, an essay on Maria Cárdenas. Uh, Maria Cárdenas was, uh, I think I call, uh, sub, uh, the subtitle of the article was uh, San Angelo's uh, Chicano Era Activist, or Radical, something like that. And so that article has found itself into the larger literature. In other words, if you take a, a history of uh, Tejanos in Texas, she's going to be mentioned. There's a book called Las Tejanas, which I have on my shelf. She's very much a part of that. Uh, and so, yes, I have, since I have produced so much, uh, much of that literature then makes its way into the larger scholarship. And so some of those are taught in university, university classes. Um, my dissert, uh, most part of my dissertation, my dissertation was called, um, well, it came to be called, they called them greasers. The book was published in 1974, 1984, uh, by the University of Texas Press. That book is still used, 40 years later, is still used in classrooms. For example, the University of Texas, if you take a course in Mexican American history, that is a book that, uh, that uh, students will read. Uh, I still get royalties from that book. I mean, usually you don't get royalties from a book after about two years because of all the books have been sold, all the copies have been sold. Everybody's going to buy the book before they bought it. So if you ask me how I contributed, that's my contribution to society. Well, as you can tell on my desk, I'm working on a book. Uh, it is a history of Mexican Americans in West Texas. Uh, I wrote a book in 19, uh, in 19 uh, I'm sorry, 2015, uh, which is called Tejano, West Texas. And Tejano, West Texas was a book of essays that I had published on West Texas since 1974. So it was a compilation of the essays that I had done in West Texas. Now the reason why I concentrated in West Texas is because there's been very, so, so very little done on this section of the state. Usually when historians, when Mexican American historians write a Mexican American history, it's called Tejano history, they concentrate on South Texas. And South Texas, of course, that's where the major, that's a major population pocket for Mexican Americans, of course, today uh, Mexican Americans are everywhere. Uh, certainly, the big cities and so on. But West Texas has always been a neglected section of the state, uh, and so I've always been in San Angelo, and I've just taken an interest in this section of the state. Uh, and there's there's there are what are called surveys, overviews of uh, Mexican Americans in South Texas. But you don't have an overview; you don't have a total history or a survey of Mexican Americans in West Texas. So that's what I'm doing today writing a history of Mexican Americans in West Texas uh, from 19, well, from the colonial era uh, until about 1945. Uh, and um, it's, when I talk about West Texas, it will be from, from uh, I've restricted it to what is called the Edwards Plateau and the Transpecos. So it's from about Tom Green County, which would be the easternmost part of what I define as West Texas, all the way to Culberson County, Hutzbeth County, uh, which is in uh, near El Paso, right next to El Paso. I don't cover El Paso. So we're talking about counties such as uh, Sutton. Um, we're talking about towns like Fort Stockton, Alpine, Presidio, Marfa, uh, Valentine, and so those little small towns, uh, relatively small towns compared to Houston, obviously, Lubbock, and the, the other uh, urban centers in uh, Texas. And you are planning to continue to write for as long as you can? As long as I can.